On the night of February 6, 1965, east of Pleiku in the Central Highlands, combat engineers slowly cut their way through deep concertina wire. Bursting through the breach, a Viet Cong company charged into Camp Holloway, AK-47s raking the camp as mortars exploded across the American airfield. This channel's mission is to challenge the Vietnam orthodoxy. Much of what you know about the Vietnam War is either incomplete or false. Please consider supporting this channel and its mission through Patreon. The link is in the description. Camp Holloway, four kilometers east of Pleiku in Zhao Lai province, was a helicopter facility opened by the US Army's 81st Transportation Company in August 1962. The camp was later named after Chief Warrant Officer Charles E. Holloway, a CH-21 pilot in the 81st, who was killed in action in December 1962. The 81st was reorganised as the 119th Assault Helicopter Company, Air Mobile, in 1963. The camp's outer perimeter was defended by an Orvin Ranger Battalion, five regional force companies and an armoured squadron. Several layers of concertina wire, 10 metres or 33 feet high, also protected the camp. At the end of 1964, the US Army's 52nd Combat Aviation Battalion was deployed to Camp Holloway, with the role of supporting operations in the central highlands of South Vietnam. As part of the Communist Spring Offensive, the Viet Cong's 409th Battalion was ordered to attack the airfield at Camp Holloway and the Orvin base at Zahu in Binzing province. The commander of the battalion, Nguyen Tang Tam, ordered his 30th company to leave its base area, move into the central highlands and reconnoitre and then attack the airfield and the MACV compound. The 30th company was reinforced with a combat engineer platoon, a sapper platoon, a local force company from Zalai province, and four 81mm mortars with 70 rounds. Tam divided the company into two sections. The first, under Tam's direct command, was to destroy aircraft on the airfield and establish the route of retreat for the attackers, while the second, led by No Chung Dai, would attack the Mac V compound. Around 11pm on February 6, 1965, the 300 men of the 30th Company assembled outside Camp Holloway. While the local force company set up ambush positions on routes likely to be used by relief forces, the combat engineers began clearing a path through the wire, but were almost discovered when they tripped an electrical wire in the third barrier. However, the US military police patrolling the area failed to detect it, and the engineers continued their work. With the path cleared, the VC flooded through the breach at 1.50am, firing their AK-47s, mortar rounds falling on the airfield and MACV compound. The sappers attempted to place explosive charges on the wall of the MACV compound, but were driven off by fire from a US sentry, and an northern outpost on the east end of the runway stopped an infantry and mortar attack on their position. By 2.15, a flare ship and three gunships from the 119th Assault Helicopter Company were over the camp. At 02.35, all firing was reported ceased, and at 2.45, an Orvin armoured unit in Pleiku reported that it was on the road to the camp. Reported strength on the perimeter at 2.55 was one half, with the other half assisting with casualties. Seven men had been killed and 104 wounded, and 10 aircraft were destroyed, with 15 damaged. News of the attack on Camp Holloway reached Saigon on the morning of February 7th, and General William Westmoreland, McGeorge Bundy and Ambassador Maxwell Taylor flew to Pleiku to assess the damage. Bundy then briefed President Johnson and informed him of MACV's request for retaliatory airstrikes against North Vietnam. Johnson convened a National Security Council meeting, attended by congressional leaders. Although Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin was visiting Hanoi, increasing the risks of retaliation, almost all those present urged a response, with only Senator Mike Mansfield speaking out against it. He asked Johnson to consider that retaliation would mean the US was no longer in a penny-ante game. Johnson listened to Mansfield, then ordered the strike, 
basing his authority on the Tonkin Gulf Resolution. Washington and Moscow shared the view that the timing of the attack had been a provocation. Anatoly Dobrynin, Soviet ambassador to the US, noted that the North Vietnamese had done their unseemly bit by launching their offensive just when Kosygin was in Hanoi, without giving us advance notice. Indeed, they were doing their utmost to foster enmity between Washington and Moscow. However, this provocation is unlikely. The attack was part of a larger offensive, and the southern commanders were not aware that Kosygin was in Hanoi. The barracks at Vit Tu Lu and Dum Hoi were the targets for the US retaliation. However, because of heavy cloud cover, the attack on Vit Tu Lu was cancelled. The 29 aircraft strike formation from the USS Coral Sea approached Dum Hoi, base for the PAVN 325th Infantry Division under a low cloud ceiling. Heavy fire from 37mm guns and Swato boats in the Kian River rose up to meet the Air Force from VA-153 and VA-155 as they dove towards their targets, rockets streaking towards the buildings and 250 pound bombs tumbling from their wings. Anti-aircraft fire tore into the Air Force piloted by Lieutenant Edward A. Dixon. He pressed on with his attack before ejecting, but his parachute failed to open and he plunged to his death. 17 Air Force from the USS Hancock followed. The aircraft from VA-212 and VA-216 attacked the now burning facilities while F-8 Crusaders suppressed the anti-aircraft sites. The strikes complete, RF-8A reconnaissance aircraft photographed the scene. But when the photographs were analysed, the results were disappointing. Only 22 of the 275 buildings in the camp had been destroyed or damaged. 